Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of The Games That Never Were. Today we're going to take a look at Robocop for the arcade. Now in the last episode we looked at Robocop for MS-DOS, which was a port of the arcade. Now it's time to look at the arcade version and see how it holds up. This game is just simply amazing and fun to play, but again, wow, it's really challenging. Like the MS-DOS version, there are tons of enemies that come from everywhere, and in later stages, there are so many that it completely slows down the arcade machine. Platforming is a bit slow because, well, let's face it, Robocop is a bit cumbersome, but he plays fine. At least stairs aren't his enemy like it was in the NES version. The music is where it's at. There are at least three fully licensed songs from the movie that appear in here, and they are on a loop. But really, I'm okay with this, because it really doesn't deter you from wanting to play the game. In fact, it made me want to push through all of those enemies. Of course, though we must talk about how the game is based loosely on the movie, because the enemies are a bit wacky in this game. Like I said previously on the MS-DOS version, I don't ever remember seeing chainsaw people, or anyone with motorcycles in the first movie. Oh, and what's up with the flying jetpack bad guys? They're just there to annoy you. The rest of the bad guys are gang members, or I would assume terrorists. I'm not too sure. The bosses are, again, weird to awesome. The best bosses in the game are the ED-209s, and there are quite a few different models of them. Each one different than the last one, and all come with various firepower to knock Robocop down a couple of notches. The other ones are just weird, like this crane. Why? Now for the stages, there are 10 stages in all, including the bonus stages, and later on these stages become very overwhelming. I mean, look at this! This is insane! There is so much going on here, it's slowing down everything! There is no way anyone could possibly beat this game without dying. Dear God! Once Robocop gets to the OCP, or the Omni Building as it's called, it's just an endurance test now. This is just absolutely insane on how much is going on, and I can't tell you how many times that I have died. The boss is going to be two different ED-209s, or ED-209s, that just eat up your quarters, and if you thought that was bad enough, the final level is just pure hell to play. Now this is where you will have to have a roll of quarters on hand just to say you beat this game. If you manage to get to the end of the level, you are greeted to the last ED-209 that is armed to the brink of annihilation. Now I'm not going to lie, that is a pretty awesome ED-209. So good luck fighting him. The final boss is Dick Jones, and all you have to do is shoot him once, and you beat the game. And I'm shooting the president. Whoops. Get out of the way. Get out of the way, dude! Alright, we got him. And now for my favorite part of the video, how much did Robocop cost to play in the 80s? Well, it was 25 cents, and I'm going to do a little bit of math here. Hold on, hold on. I died 18 times, multiplied by 25 cents. I spent around $5 to beat this game. Not bad. Not bad at all. And it's time to wrap up this video, everybody. Have you played Robocop for the arcade? And if so, let me know in the comments below. And like every time, everybody, I'll see you on the next adventure.